بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين أبا القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا لا سيما بقية الله في أرضه وحجته على عباده المهدي المنتظر صاحب العصر والزمان عجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف وجعلنا من أنصاره وأعوانه قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم واصنع الفلك بأعيننا ووحينا ولا تخاطبني في الذين ظلموا إنهم مغرقون Respected viewers Wherever you are, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the previous episode, we saw how Prophet Nuh did dua against his people. He asked Allah to punish his people because he saw that they aren't believing. He wasn't spending one year, two years, three years with them. He spent 950 years with them and he saw that no one is believing, so he did dua against them. And they asked for their own punishment. He did dua against them. Allah mentions in many verses in the Quran, فَدَعَى رَبَّهُ أَنِّي مَغْلُوبٌ فَانْتَصِرُ Oh Allah, they have defeated me. These people, they have defeated me. They are making fun of me. Help me. I need your help now. After 950 years, I'm asking you for help now. So he did dua against them, and the dua of a prophet is answered immediately. Allah answers the duas of everyone. When a mu'min, Allah promises in the Qur'an, if you ask me, I will answer you. If you do dua, I will answer you. But it depends when Allah answers. Prophet Musa, he did dua when they were lost in the desert. Allah answered his dua after 40 years. After 40 years, they were saved. But the dua was answered. Here, Prophet Nuh, he did dua. Allah tells him the, dua, the punishment does not come overnight. Now there's a plan. Now there's a process. In order to prepare yourself for the punishment, you have to start right now. So as soon as Prophet Nuh did dua, Allah answered him. But he answered him, but the punishment came many years later. Allah tells him, وَاصْنَعِ الْفُلْكَ بِأَعْيُنِنَا وَوَحْيِنَا You have to build an ark. Prophet Nuh is doing dua against his people. Allah tells him, you have to build an ark. But Prophet Nuh, he had total submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes, we ask Allah for something. Allah says, yes, go pray, go to Hajj, and I will give you that thing. We say, no, Allah asks too much from us. Here, Prophet Nuh is ordered to build an ark. Now, how is he supposed to build an ark? He doesn't know how to build an ark. What is he supposed to do? Where is he going to get all the wood from? Where is he going to get all the supplies from? Allah tells him, وَاصْنَعِ الْفُلْكَ بِوَحْيِنَا وَاصْنَعْ وَاصْنَعِ الْفُلْكَ بِأَعْيُنِنَا وَوَحْيِنَا We will be the ones supervising you. Allah is going to be the one supervising and Allah is going to be the one teaching him how to build this ark. Allah sent Angel Jibra'il, Gabriel, to teach Prophet Nuh how to build this ark. To teach him how to build an ark in a land where there is no water. What is he supposed to do? Prophet Nuh, with full submission, he begins building an ark. He begins building this ark, and it's a very big ark. Narrations say that the length 
of this ark is 1,200 dhira'. Dhira' is an arm's length, an arm's length, which is a little bit more than a feet. 1,200 dhira' and 600 dhira' is the width of this ark. This shows that this was a very big ark. And yes, it was a very big ark because Prophet Nuh, and we will see later on, he had to have animals, a pair of every animal on this ark and the believers with him. And this ark had to be strong and big enough for who knows how long they will be in the water when the flood comes. So he begins building. He follows the direct order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah tells him, you did dua against, against these people, now you have to follow me. Now this is another order that you have to do. We will teach you how to build an ark and you have to build this ark. If you build this ark, you will be saved. Then Allah tells him, وَلَا تُخَاطِبْنِي فِي الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا إِنَّهُمْ مُغْرَقُونَ but now that you have done dua against these people, don't later on when you see that they are being punished, come and try to intercede for these people. Don't try to do shafa'ah for them later on. Do not come and tell me, Oh Allah, these are my family, these are my friends, these are people that I grew up with. That's it. Now that the adab is going to come, they have chance. They have time until the flood comes. While you're building, they can repent and turn to you. But once the adab comes, that's it. You cannot come and tell me, Oh Allah, don't punish these people. Oh Allah, don't punish them. I know them, they're my neighbors, they're my community members, they're my family. You're either with them or against them. They chose to not believe in you. They chose to not have faith in you. They chose to not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they made fun of you. And they ridiculed. Now, وَلَا تُخَاطِبْنِي فِي الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا Now, you're on your own. You cannot come and say, let them come with me later on. Yes, you will receive our mercy and the ones who follow you. But your enemies, they don't receive. And they don't deserve the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this proves that there is no shafa'ah for the ones who oppress. There's no shafa'ah for the ones who follow direct orders of prophets and imams. Shafa'ah, many people they have the understanding that shafa'ah, intercession, anyone who does whatever they want, whatever that is they want to do, and then later on they receive the shafa'ah. No, not everyone receives the shafa'ah. The ones who follow the rules in this life, the ones who are on the iman, the ones who believe in Allah, they receive the shafa'ah. The ones who believe in the main principles of religion, they receive the shafa'ah. But the ones who don't believe in tawheed, and the ones who are mushrik, and the ones who deny the prophets and the imams, how are they going to, when you deny a main principle in religion, how are you going to receive the shafa'ah? So here, Prophet Nuh, Allah tells him, the ones who denied you and they denied the principles that you are asking them, Tawheed, believing in the oneness of Allah. Stop being a mushrik. Do not associate a partner with Allah. They want to associate a partner with Allah and then they come and they want the shafa'ah. Shafa'ah is for the ones who made mistakes, minor mistakes in this life, they receive the shafa'ah. Not for the ones who sin, knowing that they are sinning, and then they come and they expect the shafa'ah from Rasulullah or the Imams or other Prophets. In a hadith, in a very well-known hadith, Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam, on his deathbed, he gathers his family around him. He gathers everyone and this is on his deathbed, he wants to tell them something very important where all the family is gathered with him. He tells them, أَبْلِغُوا شِيَعَتَنَا لا ينال شفاعتنا مستخفا بصلاته. Tell our Shi'as, tell, tell our followers that they will not receive our shafa'ah if they belittle their prayer. Not if they don't pray. If they belittle the prayer, they don't receive the shafa'ah. Meaning that the shafa'ah has conditions. Just like istighfar has conditions. When you ask Allah for forgiveness, that has conditions. There are certain requirements. Shafa'ah 
Is the Imam or Rasulullah doing istighfar on your behalf? That also has conditions. So here Allah tells him, وَلَا تُخَاطِبْنِي فِي الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا إِنَّهُمْ مُغْرَقُونَ Then Prophet Nuh, he's building the ark. Prophet Nuh, he's building the ark and narrations say that he built the ark within 160 years. Some narrations say 100 years. Subhanallah, look at the patience of this man. We must learn from this Prophet of Allah. For a hundred years, he's building an ark. He never tells Allah, Oh Allah, I preached to these people for many years. I didn't ask you to punish them until 950 years, until many years, probably 850 years, let's say, when he asked, when he asked Allah to punish them. Then, Allah tells him, now you have to build an ark. And this bu building the ark takes a hundred years or more. Look at his patience. He doesn't tell Allah, oh Allah, why don't you just punish them? I've been so patient with these people. This shows that he is a prophet. And a prophet does not follow his emotions. A prophet follows his aql. And the aql believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the aql follows the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it knows that that is the right thing to do. While he's building the ark, his people, the same people that didn't believe in him, now they come to him and they start making fun of him. Oh no, you used to be a prophet. You saw that that didn't work. Now that now you've become a carpenter building an ark. Oh no, you're building an ark. Why don't you build water with it? Why don't you build a place, dig a hole where water would come? Oh no, why didn't you build this ark in a way where you can pull it to the sea? They would make fun of him. And they would make fun of him. Allah tells Allah describes what he would answer them. He is building, he doesn't care. He's following the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. While he sees them, every few hours he would raise his head and he would look at them and say, In tasharu minna fa inna nasharu minkum kama tasharu. You make fun of me, I will also make fun of you just like you make fun of me. You're laughing at me, I'm also laughing at you inside. Inside my heart, I'm feeling sorry for you. You are the losers. For laughing at me, you laugh at me because I believe in Allah, you laugh at me because I'm a mu'min, laugh at yourself if you do not believe in Allah and you do not believe the clear proof in front of you. Clear proof, bayina. He brings proof in front of them, they don't believe. They come and laugh at him, a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this shows how committed he was and how strong his faith in Allah was that he didn't let anything shake him. They would come and laugh at him. They would make fun of him. They wouldn't believe him. They don't give him anything. He's on his mission. He does whatever Allah has asked him to do. Now let us ask ourselves this question. Are we like that? Would I pray in public if I see people laughing at me? Would I, would a sister a woman wear hijab if she, if she sees people making fun of her? Are we willing to follow our religion and believe in Allah the way He has asked us to, the way He has ordered us to? Or are we going to compromise that for the feelings and for other people that are going to make fun of us, that are going to laugh at us? How strong is our faith? These stories are not for us to be entertained listening to the story, reading the story in the Qur'an. These stories are for us to learn. You see Prophet Nuh, nothing shook him. Nothing shook him. People are making fun of him. He would raise his hand and he say, you laugh at me, I also laugh at you. Are we willing to believe and live according to what Allah has asked us to do? Pray fast, wear hijab, pay our khums, pay our zakat, pay our charity, go to hajj? Or are we going to compromise that for what other people have to say? Would I pray in public and let people look at me? I see many people. In the airplane they say, no, I'm not going to pray right now. In the airport they say, no, I'm not going to pray right now. I'll just pray later on. 
two days later, one day later. This is important. This is what we learn from this Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's building this ark. Where's the wood from? Where are the nails from? Allah, when He first ordered him to build the ark, He told Prophet Nuh, go and plant seeds in the ground. They will become trees. Once they become trees, you use those trees. This is how slow the process was. It wasn't a fast process. The adab does not come overnight or anything we ask for. This is something that we, we must learn from this. A lesson is that when we ask Allah, Allah gives me whenever He feels it's the right time to give me that thing. Sometimes we ask Allah, we want something immediately. I ask Allah for money, I want it the next day. I want it an hour away. If I don't get it, I say, no, Allah does not give me, Allah does not answer my dua. Allah knows what's better for us. In dua al-iftitah, one a part of the dua says, وَلَعَلَّ الَّذِي أَبْطَأَ عَنِّي هُوَ خَيْرٌ لِي لِعِلْمِكَ بِعَاقِبَةِ الْأُمُورِ Maybe the dua that has been delayed for me, I'm asking you for something, maybe that delay is better for me because, oh Allah, you know what's better for me than myself. Allah knows what's better for me. And we have all noticed this. Sometimes we ask Allah for something, we don't get it. We get it a year later, we get it a day later, we get it six months later. Then we say, Alhamdulillah, that Allah did not give me that when I asked for it. Allah has the hikmah, Allah has the knowledge of the unseen, He knows what's better for us. So here, Prophet Nuh's process, this ada process took a very long time. This is out of the wisdom of Allah. Maybe Allah gave more time for these people to turn to Him. Because also the adab process, it does not start, it's, it wasn't just one adab. It was many types of punishments that were coming one after the other. Narrations say that 40 years before the flood, 40 years before the flood, women weren't able to have a child. They weren't, be, they weren't able to have children. This is why Prophet Nuh, I mentioned in a few verse, in a few episodes, a few episodes ago, he said, "Stakhfiru Rabbakum, innahu kana ghaffara yursil al-sama'a alaykum midrara wa yumdidkum bi amwalin wa banin." Do istighfar, Allah will give you blessings, Allah will give you rain, Allah will give you wealth, and Allah will give you children. But they did not accept that. They did not see the signs coming in front of them. Prophet Nuh, he kept building. He didn't care about what people are saying. These trees, he cut them up and he used them as wood. And Jibra'il is the engineer. Angel Jibra'il is the one teaching him. And Allah is the one teaching him. Allah tells him, وَاصْنَعِ الْفُلْكَ بِأَعْيُنِنَا وَوَحْيِنَا Build the ark while we are watching you and we are teaching you. It's our wahi, our revelation. We are teaching you how to build this ark. He uses the wood, where are the nails from? The nails, Allah sent down nails for him. He used all these nails and five narrations say this. Five of the main nails, the biggest, and the main nails that were used to hold all of the ark together, they have the names of the Ahlul Bayt on them. They have the names of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. The name of Fatima al-Zahra, the name of Amir al-Mu'mineen, the name of Imam al-Hasan and the name of Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam. This is what the narrations say. And I've heard from scholars that archaeologists, they have found Noah's Ark. They found it in Musul, Iraq. In Musul, that is where they found Noah's Ark. And the archaeologists, they saw five of the main nails that are holding the ark together, they have the names of the Ahl al-Bayt. These are the names of the Ahl al-Bayt that are, that are holding this ark together. Here Prophet Nuh, he uses the Ahl al-Bayt to save himself. He uses the Ahl al-Bayt to save, to keep, put the ark together, to hold the ark together. And here we remember 
the saying of Rasulullah, the tradition of Rasulullah, مَثَلُ أَهْلِ بَيْتِي فِيكُمْ كَسَفِينَةِ نُوح My Ahl al-Bayt, they are like Safinat Nuh, they are like Noah's Ark, they are the ship of salvation. And we will mention that in the next episode, inshallah. Prophet Nuh, he uses the names of the Ahl al-Bayt to keep his Ark together. And we mentioned how Prophet Adam, he did tawassul in the names of the Ahl al-Bayt to be saved for Allah to forgive him from eating from the tree. And all of the prophets will go on. Every prophet has a story with the Ahl al-Bayt because the Ahl al-Bayt, Rasulullah on the head, Rasulullah on top of them, they are the best creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So even these prophets, they use Rasulullah and the Ahl al-Bayt, his holy household, to save themselves. Prophet Nuh, he builds this ark and the people are watching him. They see that this ark is slowly getting bigger and bigger. Then Allah tells him, O oh Nuh, now that you have filled, now you have completed building this ark, now go and bring some animals. Bring a pair of each animal. Bring the lion, bring the horse, bring the sheep, bring the chicken, bring the elephant, bring all the animals. He builds cages. And of course, this is under the supervision of Allah. Build the ark under our supervision. This is what Allah tells him. He builds cages. Then he calls on the animals. And all the animals, they come to him. A pair of every animal, they come to him. And Allah says this in the Quran. حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءَ أَمْرُنَا وَفَارَ التَّنُّورِ قُلْ نَحْمِلْ فِيهَا مِنْ كُلِّ زَوْجَيْنِ اثْنَيْنِ O Nuh, carry from every pair, from every animal, carry two, carry, take a pair, a male and a female of that animal. He calls the animals, the animals, the animals are all, all there. Now he is ready. He has completed his mission. He has built the ark. The animals are all there. Now it's up to Allah to decide when the adab will come. Then the order of Allah comes. The Amr of Allah. And nothing can defeat the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The adab of Allah was coming. It was the last day, the last moment of these people, the people of Nuh, who Prophet Nuh was so patient with them. Now the time is up. They did not believe. The time is up. In the next episode, we will see what happened. We will describe this flood that flooded the earth and took everyone out of the face of the earth. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.